Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video I wanted to take a look at some more community mods but in a bit of a different way. I've always struggled to find a place for quality of life mods in my videos as you know sometimes they don't really grab your attention like some of the more crazy ones might. But I think I found a great way to highlight some of my favorites that really are incredible mods without doing much to the game itself. So we'll be taking a look at all of the Project Zomboid mods that I think should be vanilla features. The focus will be on things that fit into the game without massively affecting mechanics or changing too much, but are used by many players just because they work so well with the game. If you enjoy the video, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now to kick things off, I wanted to start with a mod that adds something the community has been asking for for a long, long time now. Granted, the developers have commented on this in the past and have said they'd like to add this functionality, but that it's not exactly their top priority for them at present. The true actions mod by IBR Russ and Troy McClure adds the ability to sit down in chairs and lay back on a bed or sofa. Now due to the limitations with Zomboid's design, the items must be facing east or south, but still, it's a really nice touch for the game to be able to take a seat whilst you're reading, eating, or watching your favourite episode of Woodcraft. One small note for multiplayer servers here, make sure to turn off anti-cheat protection type 12 if you plan to use this with your server. On a similar token to the first mod we've looked at, the Read While Walking mod by Star solves a common complaint from many Zomboid players, allowing you to at the very least take a bit of a stroll around your base whilst training yourself with some useful knowledge. Reading is usually something players skip through on single player, but on multiplayer we don't have the capacity to speed up time, so this feature adds a nice little bit of compromise for those that don't want to go AFK for a few minutes whilst reading in multiplayer. A simple addition and one I'd love to see in the game as standard. Next I wanted to move on to a batch of mods that are targeted towards making all things inventory management that little bit easier. The king of all mods when it comes to inventory management has to be the mod Better Sorting by Chobits Crazy, which reorganizes the way inventory items are presented in categories. Now, many items in the vanilla version of the game are simply given the category item and lumps together said items from lots of different areas. With Better Sorting, these categories are broken down into things like cleaning, crafting, cooking or medical. You can then sort by that category to batch these items together in a fashion that makes a little bit more sense. Along these same lines, an exhilaratingly organized literature mod by Oh God Spiders Know allows you to sort books into categories that make sense, such as maps, magazines and skill books. Books for the same skills will group together and you can even flag books as owned by reading the first page, which helps out a lot on loot runs to determine which books you already have have back at your safe house. There's also four sets of styles that you can choose to apply to the icons of skill books, which is a nice visual touch. Next up, we've got Backpack Borders by Notlock. This is a mod I've highlighted in the past, but fits so nicely with any playthrough as it's just a simple little UI tweak. The Backpack Borders mod puts a small box around all of your containers in the inventory panel on the right hand side, which helps you to identify your bags from one another, especially if they are a dark colored bag that blends into the background of the inventory panel. So that's my main mods for all things inventory management. And I did just want to take a moment to say that if there's anything in this video as you continue to watch that you think, oh, well, he hasn't mentioned this one, go ahead and drop it in the comments for me. The whole purpose of these videos is to get more people the knowledge they need. So I'd appreciate the help from you guys on that. Oh, and also there's a link in the description to all of the mods I've mentioned thus far and all of the ones that will be coming up. A relatively new feature to Project Zomboid, the map is one of the most useful tools a player has in their arsenal to help them survive. But with it being in its infancy, there's a lot of features that are ultimately missing right now. Thankfully, we've a whole bunch of mods on the workshop that improve said map feature. For example, the draw on map mod by Notlock adds the ability to draw freehand rather than using symbols or typing, which whilst is pretty basic, isn't something we have in vanilla right now. Speaking of symbols, the mod Extra Map Symbols by Wipe does exactly what it says on the 
the tin, giving you access to a whole bunch more icons for marking things on your map. A great mod to go with this is the map symbol size slider by Caps Cry, which again pretty much does exactly what you think it will, allowing the player to choose the size of the icons they use on the map. Another addition I'd recommend for your map is the Map Legend UI by Nick Gamer. A really simple addition, this mod helps to identify the colour coding system that Project Zomboid uses with a legend on the side of the map. Honestly, I know this is probably only an issue for the newer players, but it's for that reason I think this could be easily added into vanilla. To complete this set of mods for your map, the four colour Bic Pen mod from Olipro adds this famous pen of mysteries that amazed us all as children to the loot spawns of Project Zomboid, giving you the ability to draw on your map in any of the four colours with just one item. Simple, easy, and something I'd like to see in the loop spawns by default, even if at a small spawn chance. There's an optional mod I just want to mention for maps before I move on, which is only going to be necessary for multiplayer or co-op. The Share Annotations mod by Belette allows players to copy down markings from other players' maps onto your own. It's a pretty handy feature, honestly, especially if one of your group likes to make markings on the map and others not so much. This leads me nicely into our next mod, which is also one that's entirely multiplayer or co-op focused. The mod Faction Safe Houses with Friends by Master Splinter creates a way for players to enter the safe houses of those they share a faction with. This updates every in-game hour so that anyone on the list of members within a faction is added to any viable safe houses. This is something that from my experience running a server, Project Zomboid is sorely missing. Right now, there's no way to share safe house access with one another if the server you are playing on only allows players to own a single safe house, which is usually the standard to prevent vast portions of the map being taken up. This mod allows a pleasant middle ground where other players can enter the safe houses of their friends whilst maintaining the restrictions built to keep loot safe in many servers from potential griefing or theft, and still allow them to have their own safe house too. Now here's an interesting one for you. In the vanilla version of Project Zomboid, I'm sure many of you have decided to build a rain collector at one stage or another, to convert into drinking water or to provide water for your crops. A few less of you might have made it to winter and found that rain collectors don't actually fill up when it's snowing, which, whilst you might not think about at the time, is pretty odd, right? Snow would still fill a rain collector, after all. Well, with the Snow is Water mod by Burel, this small discrepancy is fixed, allowing you to you gather water at a 50% slower rate when it's snowing. It's perfect for cryogenic winter playthroughs, but also just for the average Zomboider looking to make things a little bit more realistic. Staying on the topic of keeping hydrated, this next one is a mod I like to use in pretty much all of my playthroughs. The Water Dispenser mod by Connie Jima gives you the ability to remove the large bottle from atop a water dispenser for storage purposes. It also makes it a lot easier to collect and carry away some water when out on a loot run rather than taking the whole dispenser. It's a really simple change, but something that's incredibly useful for saving space and is something I'd love to see implemented into vanilla at some stage. A similar mod from Konijima is the Fuel API mod, which allows players to use barrels for storing fuel, meaning less trips to the gas station and more time spent looting and thriving. It also adds larger jerry can versions of the vanilla gas can and gives players the ability to tweak things like gas transfer time or how much gas a barrel can store. I understand why this one might not be added to Zomboid from a balancing perspective. After all, having to manage resources like fuel is a large part of the game, but if it's realism you're after, it's a good one to drop into your playthroughs. A popular mod that's used by many in Project Zomboid, which I really do think could be implemented incredibly easy by the developers, is the Fuel Side Indicator mod by Photo Buffalo. In essence, all this mod does is give you a little arrow on your car's dashboard to show you which side of the vehicle the fuel port is located on. No more reversing out away from the pumps and turning the vehicle around so you can fill up. You'll always know which side to pull in on the first time around. Again, super simple, but solves a common annoyance for many. Another mod that works perfectly for vehicles is the car dashboard radio button. In vanilla Zomboid, you'll have to open the context menu when in a vehicle to turn on the radio. Newer players often don't even realize that radios in 
cars are available to start with for this reason. Adding a button to the dashboard seems like a simple fix for this problem and something I'd love to see included in vanilla. Now we've all had a moment in Project Zomboid when your weapon breaks in a situation that isn't favourable. Some of you may have even died as a result of your weapon breaking and an inopportune moment. Currently the one way to check the condition of your weapon is to open your inventory and hover over the item, which doesn't seem like much, but it's easy to forget. With the weapon condition indicator mod from Noctis Falco, you'll always have an indication at the bottom of your screen for the condition of your weapon. A simple UI tweak that just makes life easier for the average player, and for that reason, it's one I'd love to see in vanilla in a similar capacity. Next up, we've got some mods that are focused around those that like to make sure things look nice in the world around them. From cosmetics to cleaning, these mods will have you well covered. So, the first one we've got is Better Hand Wash by Sunny Holic. This rebalances the amount of water needed to clean your clothing based on the amount of blood that's present on the item, rather than being a flat rate, as well as tweaking some values to make smaller clothing items like socks use less water to clean than, say, a jacket. To me, this is something that should work as normal in Project Zomboid. Sticking very closely to that same theme, the Ring Out Clothing mod by Kelbs allows players to dry their clothing by simply wringing it out. You won't ever be able to dry your clothes fully with this method, which is where this mod is balanced for vanilla, scaling directly with the strength level of your character. The higher strength you have, the more water you'll be able to wring from your clothing. It's simple and well balanced. And for all of those players that like to keep their safe houses clean and tidy, the mod Clean Dirt by God's Will is the perfect addition to Project Zomboid. All this allows players to do is clean those walls and floors that come across as a bit grimy using bleach with a mop or a towel. No lasting balance changes for the game itself, but nice for those that like to keep their base clean down to the very last detail. Now let's move on to all things character appearance. First, the improved hair menu by Duck Duck Quack. No, I didn't make this, that's genuinely the creator's name, and yes it is definitely a part of why they made this list. That aside though, this mod is a fantastic showcase of how the character creation menu could be improved slightly, offering you a visual representation of all of the hairstyles available when creating your character, rather than having to choose each one individually. Fluffy Hair by Scavenger allows players to wear hats in Project Zomboid with more realistic adjustments to how this would affect the character's hair, rather than remaining unedited entirely or simply changing to ponytail models like it does in vanilla currently. There's a couple of hairstyles that have been improved slightly by this mod as well, just to look a little bit more suitable for the game, and it works quite well. This mod can be paired with Spongy's hair pack, Yaki's hair salon, and Harry's hair, as well for additional customization options. Next is Spongy's open jackets mod, which does exactly what you think it does, giving the player the option to wear most jackets in the game with the zippers opened. It doesn't really do anything in the way of balancing, just gives you a nice additional option for how your character looks, and allows you to show off the shirt underneath. If you've ever tried running a base on light sources that use bulbs and or batteries, you've probably realised that these light bulbs die out incredibly quickly. Some would argue this is a balancing choice, but honestly, I think this is a really tedious task just to replace light bulbs every couple of days. So with that in mind, the Long Life Bulbs mod by Painless Jack extends the lifetime of the average bulb considerably, meaning that you won't need to replace them as often and keeps the tedious task at bay for longer. Sticking to light source options, the Candles mod by Dark Prozac adds the ability to craft candles by placing animal fat into a saucepan to create tallow, then combined with a wick and some matches or a lighter. When it comes to long-term survival, I can see this being a really cool addition that the devs could consider, especially as we're facing down some pretty big crafting changes coming with Build 42 and beyond. Speaking of crafting changes, one minor addition I'd really like to see implemented if we're going to be getting a crafting overhaul is covered by the mod Tidy Upmeister by Pep... Pep... Uh, this guy, which essentially ensures that when your character is crafting, they equip the item that was in their hand before the craft begins after the craft is finished. It's super simple, but seems like a very easy quality of life change and something that would make a lot of sense. Last couple of mods for this list now, as I'm conscious writing this script that there's a hell of a lot of mods in here and I'm sure this video will be longer than I originally intended. The more description for traits mod by Champinac gives
gives clear and concise information about how traits will affect your character, presenting percentages and values for each change it will make. This is one of my biggest bugbears with Project Zomboid, so I'd love to see any confusion around traits cleared up by a similar feature to what this mod provides. On very similar lines, the clear descriptions for Moodles mod by Unnameable does exactly the same thing for Moodles as well, giving you clear information on how the various states your character finds themselves in will actually affect them. Alright, so longer video than I had initially intended, but I hope you guys got something useful from this, and once again, if there's any mods that you guys think should be included as standard with Project Zomboid, just let me know in the comments. Special thank you to all of my patrons, as always, for joining us on the Patreon server and for supporting the channel. I couldn't do it without you. Link is in the description if you want to join them, and thanks folks, I will see you all in the next one.